The essential feature of all existence, and the law that rules the universe is one of a purposeful and positive effort, so one can only find his place in life through striving to participate in this vast cosmic activity, though of necessity in terms appropriate of their own human capabilities. Some people often call it the Faustian bargain or the bargain of Mephistopheles, a pact whereby a person trades something of supreme moral or spiritual importance such as personal values or his own soul in exchange for some worldly and material benefits. It can also refer to any scenario in which an individual is driven to ask the help of evil powers to reach a particular goal or to fulfill any desire. And a common characteristic of a pact with the devil is that it always comes at the cost of the user and sometimes leading to either death, eternal damnation or any other unsavory ending. The theme of humans making deals with the devil or with some other supernatural beings is common throughout the Judeo-Christian world, so a deal with the devil is a cultural motif often exemplified by the legend of the Dr. Faust, as well as being elemental to many Christian traditions. According to common Christian beliefs about witchcraft and other magical related practices, the diabolical pact is usually a pact between a person and the devil in which the client trades or attempts to bargain his soul in exchange for diabolical favors. And those vary by the tale but tend to include knowledge, youthfulness, wealth, fame and the list goes on. But it is also believed that some people made this type of pact just as a sign of recognizing the devil as their master in exchange for pretty much nothing. It was common practice for whoever had made a diabolical pact to offer their children as sacrifice or to consecrate them to the devil at their moment of birth, and because of that, many midwives were accused of this practice due to the number of children who died at birth in the Middle Age and the Renaissance. Some sources even claim to have plenty allusions to these pacts, which consider all witches and sorcerers to have made covenants with demons whom they have sexual relationships with, and sometimes engender children from incubus or succubus in the case of women. Typically there are different scenarios for these deals, the older one is when the creature representing the great deceiver sabotages the deal to make it unfair, leaving the client with no other choice but to pay the price. Other cases usually found in darker stories and even present in today's society, is when the devil keeps his end of the bargain by giving what he had promised under specific rules or conditions, but then the focal point of the story becomes centered on whether the client will be able to live by these rules and to pay their end of the deal when their time comes. If by any reason the client was to break any condition that has been imposed upon them, they will jeopardize the deal they had made which will allow the devil to come collect what he has been promised faster than expected. So whether the individual follows these conditions or not, the outcome will not change as the devil will still come to harvest their soul. Based in some accounts, the diabolical pact can be done in two different manners. Some sources claimed that a verbal pact is made by means of invocations, conjurations or rituals to attract the required entity and once the conjurer is certain of the demonic presence, they will then ask for the wanted favor and offer their soul in exchange and no evidence is left of the pact. But according to some which trials and inquisitions that were performed, even a verbal pact can leave an evidence often known as the diabolical mark, which is an indelible mark located where the person had been touched by the devil to seal the pact. This mark is a visual proof confirming that a pact was made, and many also believed that the individual could feel no pain on the spot where the mark was left. A written pact on the other hand consists of the same forms of summoning demons, but includes a covenant usually written and signed with the conjurer's blood. These written pacts already present themselves as diabolical in the eyes of any commoner, but there is no real proof of whether they were written by people believing they were actually dealing with a demon, or they were just fake covenants sourcing from the heresy of insane individuals. The covenant usually includes strange characters that were said to be the signature of a demon, and each one had his own signature or seal known as diabolical seals. There is a notorious case of written pacts which is still relevant nowadays and one that cost the life of Urbain Grandier. It is said that one of the documents was redacted in Latin and apparently signed by Grandier, 
while the other one is basically illegible and written backwards in Latin with scribal abbreviations. This document equally carries many strange symbols and was said to have been signed by several demons, including Satan himself whose name was clearly written as Satanus. According to demonology, there is a specific month and day of the week to call a certain type of demon, so the invocation for a pact has to be done at that particular time. Believing that each demon has a specific function, they have to be invoked depending on what the conjurer is willing to ask. What is crucial for us to understand here is that a pact can only be made upon the free will of the conjurer or the one willing to sell his soul for whatever reason, or else nothing would be possible because they have to give spiritual access to these demonic forces to have major influences in their lives. Same goes for any pact made between two parties, whether it is between two individuals or between a human and a transcendental being. Even the devil himself cannot forcefully make a pact with a mortal if the latter does not give him consent, otherwise humanity would already be doomed. The devil can only seduce human beings until they give themselves up to these temptations and accept the deal from their own free decision. Therefore, nothing and nobody can steal one's essence if they were not given some kind of permission in advance. In mythology and fiction, a case regarding the pact with the devil does not always involve a pact between the client and the devil himself as previously mentioned. The similar deal can also be made with other antagonistic individuals or with an accursed artifact, in either cases the price to pay would always be the same. In the popular novel Lord of the Rings, the Nine Nazgul were originally nine mortal kings who accepted the rings of power from Sorong in exchange for their souls which they eventually lost. And when the evil Sorong rose in power, they were resurrected as ghoulish apparitions that were invisible except for their black armors and cloaks. In the German tale Bearskin from the Brothers Grimm, a soldier without means to earn a living met the devil and made a deal. The devil would give the soldier a jacket with pockets that were always full of gold, and in return the soldier was conditioned to wear the skin of a bear and to not groom himself or pray for seven years. The French-Canadian tale of the devil and the lazy man features a man who had the finest crops and animals even though he never did any work. But one night a neighbor discovered that he had made a pact with the devil to do his farm work under the cover of night. The neighbor eventually rushed to the local priest to explain what was happening, and the priest had the farm sprinkled thoroughly with holy water, so when the devil appeared the following night, the holy water drove him off and was sure that his client was trying to get rid of him so he dragged him away. A number of famous works refer to pacts with the devil, from the numerous Devil's Bridges of Europe to the story of the deal with the devil at crossroads associated with the American Robert Johnson, whom is still known as the master of the Delta Blues. The tale claims that in exchange for his soul, Johnson was able to create the blues for which he became famous just like the violin virtuoso Giuseppe Tartini and Niccolo Paganini have done centuries before him. A collection of artists who sold their souls for fame and incredible talent that has certainly influenced later generations of musicians. The bargain with the devil is a dangerous one as the price of a demon's service is the soul of the adventurer, and please note that the tale always have a moralizing end, which is the eternal damnation of whoever is foolish enough for trying to make an easy way through life using diabolical means. However, there are tales in which the person making the pact tries to outweat the devil, characteristically on a technical point so nobody is losing their soul, such as the Norwegian folktale of the Master Smith and the Irish tale of Stingy Jack whom were able to make the devil give up on taking them after a series of well-crafted trickery. There's also the story of a man who once sold his essence for eternal life so that he would never have to die to pay his end of the bargain. Immune to the death penalty, he committed murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Although the protagonist involved in these stories usually ends up getting the better of the devil, the reality is most likely the complete opposite of what is being told in many tales. Once a pact has been made between the devil and a human who is willing to bear the consequences that come with the deal, it is almost impossible to turn back from it or to make his way out of that situation. However, 
There are some exceptions of those who were able to escape a diabolical pact and eternal damnation through exorcism in order to get rid of what ties them to the devil, and by confession of what they have done in hope to be granted forgiveness and therefore receive salvation for their soul. Whatever the case may be for them to seek divine support, most of these people who manage to escape often end up losing something irreplaceable such as their mental stability, or many human senses because they saw what should not be seen, touched and heard what is beyond reality, but at what cost. Which bring us to our original statement, are really the worldly material benefit and pleasure worthy of losing your soul for the eternity? No matter what religion we belong to, we can all agree that one's life on earth is not eternal even though many tend to forget this transcendental law obeyed by every single human on earth. So after the devil gave you what you wished for in exchange for your soul, when the time comes for you to honor your side of the bargain by letting the devil take what belongs to him, and whether you like it or not, there won't be enough prestige or wealth to save you from where your soul is going after your death. Hopefully you enjoyed this video which is a little bit different from what we usually have on the channel. So leave it a like, drop me a comment and do consider subscribing as well for more videos in the future. And as always, stay curious.